For many thousands of years, our species has walked and lived on the Earth, not knowing very much about it, not even the shape. Today, we're going to look at one of the stranger theories about Earth, one you probably have never heard of. No, not flat Earth. Pyramid Earth. This is the story of our tetrahedron world. It goes like this. A long time ago, the Earth was forming. Everything was very hot. As the planet cooled, it cooled faster on the outside than the inside, just like a pie or a bowl of soup. The outside of the planet hardened, while the inside kept cooling, shrinking as it went. A gap began to open up between the interior of the Earth and this hardened crust. Eventually, this gap became too big, and parts of the crust began to collapse inward. The collapsing caused the crust to reform itself according to geometric laws. In geometry, if you apply regular pressure to a sphere, it will tend to turn into a tetrahedron. This is because a tetrahedron, the four-sided pyramid here, is the shape with the largest surface area to the smallest volume. So, with a big outer crust and a smaller interior, the Earth reformed itself from a sphere to a pyramidal shape. This ends up explaining a lot of things that are really weird about Earth. For instance, the fact that all the continents pretty much span the full north-south axis of the globe, but still 70% of the dry land is in the northern half of the Earth. On tetrahedron Earth, this makes sense because the continents run the length of the spines of the tetrahedron, one land mass per spine, and still are mostly concentrated together in the top here, except for Antarctica, who's forever alone. It also explains why the point opposite to almost any point of land on the Earth, Antipodes, is water. All the edges are opposite from the tetrahedron's faces, and the faces are depressions caused by the collapsing crust, so the water all settles there, making the oceans. Lastly, it explains why measurements of the Earth's curvature never really give us a proper sphere. We know that even along the equator, the Earth is squished and irregular in places. It's a great story, really. It was thought up by a guy named William Lothian Green in 1875 and was pretty much entirely ignored for his whole life. But after he died in the early 1900s, it was resurrected and gained a lot of respect. Here's an article from 1926 in the New York World showing an illustration of how the theory works. It's not that Green thought the Earth actually looked like a perfect pyramid. He wasn't crazy. He described the Earth as looking pretty much like a sphere, but just not quite. He said that the Earth was bent and broken just enough that it would cause all those lovely explanations to make sense, and it sounded pretty good for a long time. Today, we think the continents just kind of float around on the Earth because of tectonic plates. We don't really understand it, but we figure the numbers should work out. It's pretty hard to measure since the plates are big and they move slow. A hundred years ago, no one could figure out what would cause land to move. Today, we point to heat from the Earth's core, moving all that magma around, pushing on the plates. William Green actually helped us come up with that, strangely enough, although it didn't help the whole tetrahedron thing. And as for the shape of the Earth, we call it an irregular ellipsoid. This is basically us throwing up our hands because the damn Earth isn't a perfect sphere. Centrifugal force throws out the center, gravity distorts hills and mountains, and the shape changes all the time, literally every day. That's annoying for geologists. We killed Pyramid Earth when we got a hold of Pangaea, better measuring tools, and asked some hard geological questions. And also, it's definitely wishful thinking to say that each continent is directly opposite from each ocean, but it does make a pretty story. Thanks for watching. Please like or subscribe if you thought this video was interesting, or if you want to see more. Have a great day.